Fumi is a pathetic guy with no social life whatsoever. The only thing he's good at is video games, and he views life as one. People like him, who have been given a basic skin in life, have a tough time. On the other hand, people like the class leader, who have a legendary skin, have it easier. He has a girlfriend, many friends, and a thriving social life just because he's good looking. And to some extent, our friend is right because this applies to real life. However, his life is about to change. After defeating the most popular guy in school, he expects everyone to recognize his achievement the next day. But in reality, nobody gives a damn about his victory. In the classroom, we meet Hinami, the most popular girl of all. She excels in academics, sports, is super sociable, and everyone loves her, she's basically perfect. When Fumia sees people like her, he can't help but think that life sucks for people like him. So, to lift his spirits, he starts playing his favorite game, in which he happens to be the best in Japan. But on that day, he faces his greatest rival. While playing, he notices that his opponent has practiced a lot and is excelling in something he's not good at. Nevertheless, he's not at his opponent's level yet. After the game, the other player suggests they meet somewhere and get to know each other. In real life, most guys probably wouldn't do this for safety reasons. Fumia doesn't know whether to meet him or not, but in the end, he decides to go. The next day, he arrives at the agreed-upon location, and what strikes him as odd is that the other player says he's wearing a skirt. He sees a girl and asks her if she's the other player. To the surprise of both, the second player turns out to be Hinami, the perfect girl from school. Upon learning this, he's naturally surprised, but on the other hand, she is more disappointed because she expected the person who always beat her to be at least better than her in real life, not a guy with no life like him. What did he say? What the girl says angers our friend, and he tells her that he's not to blame for not being good looking or athletic. He was born this way, and he sees changing that is impossible, but people like her can never understand. However, Hinami tells him that it's like that because he wants it to be. If he saw life the way he does with video games, everything would change, and he would accept that life is a great game. He simply hasn't discovered it yet, but out of respect for the fact that she has defeated him every time, she will repay the favor by making him change. She takes his hand and leads him to her house, where she explains several things. To start, his goal must be to have a life both in real life and like within video games. To achieve that, it's not that difficult. He must focus on two aspects, posture and expressions. By training these two, he will undergo a significant transformation. But most importantly, he must stop seeing life as a garbage game and start seeing it as the most entertaining game of all. Just like he's the best player in Japan, he must now be the best in reality. He must stop running away. All these words make Fumia realize his past mistakes. He had never made an effort to change, he simply accepted things as they were. But now that at least one person has recognized him, he's determined to give it a try. The real game begins. After leaving Hinami's house, she tells him that for a while, he should wear masks to practice his smile. When he gets home, he does it, but not very well. The next day, the two of them meet, and their teacher tells them that from now on, their lives will be based on goals, both short and long term. His main goal is to have a social life, and his long-term goal is to have a girlfriend before the year ends. Fumia finds this impossible because he doesn't even know how to talk to others. However, Hinami already has something in mind to help him with this. She tells him that on that day, he has to start by talking to the two girls sitting next to him. First, he must approach Izumi, so Fumia, with his mask on to initiate the conversation, asks if she has any tissues because he forgot his. She says she doesn't, but the girl behind her does, Kikuchi, remember her because she will be important in the future. The next girl is Minami, one of the most popular girls in the entire school. Our friend approaches her, extremely nervous, but despite his fear, he decides to speak to her. However, when he does, he is left in shock by the girl's cheerful attitude and doesn't know what to say. He manages to tell a joke, and the girl loves it. But things get complicated when Nekamu arrives. He asks Minami what she's laughing about, and she tells him the joke Fumia made. However, he and his friends don't find it funny. The awkward moment can be felt in the air, but Hinami saves him from this situation. She tells Nakamu not to mess with Fumia just because he beat him in a video game. That same attitude is what got his girlfriend to leave him. Emotional damage. After this, Fumia and the others thank her for intervening and Minami thanks him in a somewhat curious way. Sensational. After that scene, Hinami tells Fumia that Nakamu will look for situations to make fun of him, so he must learn to defend himself. The next day, she provides him with the basics for a good conversation and never running out of topics. She gives him a multitude of notes with many topics and then asks him how he thinks a conversation flows. Fumia tells her that he has observed how Minami starts conversations and then extends them with existing topics, and that is precisely what he should do. Later, Hinami corrects his posture and tells him that that evening, 
he will go home with his group of friends. Naturally, our friend is super nervous about this but manages to achieve his goal. However, the day doesn't end there because what he didn't know is that Manami lives in the same neighborhood as him. So, the two of them walk home together, and on the way, he asks her how she always looks cheerful. Minami tells him that even when she's sometimes sad, like any other person, she knows that those are the moments when she should smile the most to face her problems. Great advice. The next day, Hinami tells him that on that sare, he will spend the day with her. It's already sare, and Fumio arrives late. But she forgives him because he took more time getting ready. Hinami tells him that the goal for that day is to level up his skin. To achieve that, they will go shopping for clothes. In the store, she advises him that if he's unsure about which garment to buy or doesn't know what suits him, he should always look at the outfits on the mannequins because they usually don't go wrong. And, being the introvert that he is, our friend is afraid to ask if he can try on the clothes, much like I am when ordering food for delivery. After a haircut and a change of clothes, the guys go to a restaurant to discuss the next steps of their plan. However, when they are served their food, they are surprised to find that their server is Kikuchi. She is taken aback to see them together, but this situation leads to a great idea. Inami tells Fumia that the girl who will be his girlfriend is Kikuchi. At first, he doesn't understand why she says that. But Hinami explains that when he asked Izumi for a tissue, Kikuchi already had some prepared, suggesting that she is interested in him the way he is. Later that night, our friend accomplishes his first goal as his younger sister notices that he looks more put together and asks if he had finally gotten a girlfriend. Fumi arrives at Hinami's place and shares this great news. Now, it's time to move forward. For that, he will have to go on a date with a girl from school who is not Hinami. Furthermore, his task for the week is to initiate conversations with Izumi at least twice a day. He asks why he has to do that, and she tells him that girls find guys more attractive when they interact with other girls because it implies they know how to relate to women. The practice sessions begin, and Fumia gives his all to have a decent conversation with Izumi. However, our friend is still pretty bad at it, and their connection isn't great. But there's a glimmer of hope because while he was in the library, Kikuchi arrives. The sweet girl comments that she always sees him in the library and gets excited when she sees that he's reading the same book series. What she doesn't know is that Fumia literally picked up that book just to pretend he was reading while thinking about how to talk to Izumi. Fumia tries to pretend he doesn't know anything about the books she's reading, and apparently, he succeeds because Kikuchi tells him that it's the first time she has enjoyed a conversation with someone so much. She also mentions that she's writing a novel and would love for him to be the first person to read it. Fumia happily agrees, and the girl bids farewell. It's often said that we're alone because we're distracted. Fumia tells Hinami everything that happened, and she says that even if he doesn't know anything about those books, a goal is a goal. So, he should take that and use it to his advantage to get a date with Kikuchi. On the other hand, he fulfilled his mission for the week, even though he didn't establish a connection with Izumi. Now, like in a video game, he has a save point where he can start over. I think that this girl's explanations are also helping me. After the conversation with Hinami, Fumia is about to leave. But as he exits, he sees Izumi looking somewhat sad. So, he decides to ask her what's wrong. At first, she says that everything is fine. But just as Fumia is about to leave, out of nowhere, she asks him to teach her how to play the game he's so good at. Let's call it Smash Bros. As they walk home, she tells him that she's interested in Nakamu, and she wants to find a way to get closer to him. All she knows is that he plays a lot of Smash Bros, and knowing that Fumia is really good at the game, she asked for his help. So, without wasting any more time, they go to Izumi's house, and as it's about video games, our friend's attitude changes completely. Now, he's the one giving orders, he starts explaining all the basics she needs to know about the game, shows her some combos, and all the character abilities. Izumi is amazed by all his knowledge, but also because he dedicates so much effort to a game. He tells her that it's not about wanting to be the best or being recognized, what he loves most in life are challenges. He used to think that challenges only existed in video games, but someone showed him that there are many more in life. So now, he is determined to embrace life's challenges. The curious thing is that as Fumia talks, he increasingly resembles his friend Hinami. Later, Fumia encounters Kikuchi and decides not to follow Hinami's advice. He tells her the whole truth, that he actually knows nothing about the book she reads and that he simply picked up the book because it was the one closest to him. But now that they know each other, they are both genuinely interested in reading them. If she no longer wants him to read her novel, he fully understands. Fumia expected her to get angry or something, but she tells him it's okay, he can read them when he wants, and as for her novel, she still wants him to read it. She is amazing. Later, Fumia is about to tell Hanami everything that happened, but before he does, Nakama's friends take him to the gaming room where he is waiting for a rematch. Despite our friend telling him it's futile, he insists on playing. Izumi also arrives, along with another group of girls, including Erika, another popular girl. The battle begins, or well, I'm not sure if I can call it that because Fumia easily defeats Nakamo. However, he doesn't give up and asks to play again. On the other hand, Hanami realizes that something is happening with Fumia and investigates. After a while, she finds out what's going on. The matches continue, but there's nothing to be done, Fumia is infinitely better than Nakamo. 
Although, on one occasion, Nakama managed to block one of Fumia's attacks. That was not enough, and he accepts his defeat. However, Erika comes to complicate everything. After losing, she tells Fumia that he's good for nothing, that she practiced every day and couldn't do anything, and that his effort is worthless. At this moment, we see the protagonist angry for the first time. Fumia gets up from his seat and shouts at Erika that she doesn't know what she's talking about. Someone as superficial as her can't understand the meaning of effort and passion for something. She can't disparage someone's effort in that way. If anyone is useless, it's her. In addition to Fumia, Izumi also tells Erika a few truths, and after this, the girl finally leaves. All of this earns both Fumia and Izumi Nakama's respect. A few days later, Hinami asks the protagonist why he hasn't invited Kikuchi to the movies yet, to which our friend says he doesn't feel it's the right time. But as they talk about going out, Fumia invites Hinami to the movies, but she tells him she has something to do that day. However, they can watch a movie at her house later that night. Upon hearing this, Fumia finally feels genuine excitement. He's not interested in a romantic date with Hinami, but something inside him has just awakened, as if he had unlocked a secret mission. The next day, Mizu tells him that she really liked what he said to Erika. It was exactly what he wanted to say but couldn't muster the courage to do so. She realizes he's a great guy and suggests they go out someday. Our friend's social life seems to be improving, and now Hinami tells him to make the most of it and invite someone else to go out with them. Due to their proximity, Fumia decides to invite Izumi and suggests that, as Nakama's birthday is approaching, the two of them could look for a gift. Izumi happily agrees, and that's how on Seder, Fumia, Hinami, Izumi, and Mizu go shopping. But before they start, Hinami tells Fumia that his task for the day is to give suggestions, like a place to go for lunch. For our friend, this seems a bit challenging, and he falls back into his comfort zone. However, he makes significant progress in his way of speaking and communicating with others during the outing. In the midst of the shopping trip, Izumi tells him something that leaves him deep in thought. Hinami and Mizu are dating. However, this will be revealed later. Continuing the outing, Fumia suggests to Izumi that as a gift, she should buy hair gel for Nakamo. This turns out to be a perfect idea. The four of them go to the store, and Mizu uses Fumia as a model. Our friend looks like a model, and when he sees himself in the mirror, he starts to notice that he's genuinely changed for the better. With renewed motivation, he's determined to continue playing the game of life. Later, the outing ends, and Hinami leaves with Mizu. The following week, Fumia wants to ask her if they are dating, but Hinami always interrupts him and tells him that he hadn't fulfilled the setter's objective. However, due to his considerable effort, she lets it slide. Now, things get more interesting because the student council president elections are open, and the two girls running for the position are Hinami and Minami. What's even more intriguing is that Hinami tells him that he will be Minami's campaign manager. Fumia asks why she made that decision, and she tells him that after her, Minami is the girl with the best ability to communicate with others, and that will help her a lot. But he doesn't need to worry about being on the opposing side of his friend because there's no chance that Minami will win. Or maybe there is. Minutes later, Fumia runs into Minami, and although he's nervous, he tells her that he can be her campaign manager. However, she thanks him for the offer but already has someone in that role, which doesn't surprise Fumia because he would have done the same. Later, our friend goes to the library to do some thinking, and there he encounters Kikuchi. He asks her what she thinks about the election, to which she replies that she doesn't think it's about winning or losing. She believes Minami wants to change things at school, but more than that, she wants to change something about herself, just like she wants to change as well. Upon hearing this, Fumia asks her why she wants to change, but Kikuchi feels a bit embarrassed by what she said, and she blushes even more when Fumia thinks aloud and tells her that she looks very pretty that day. This conversation makes Fumia wonder why a popular girl like Minami wants to change. What exactly does she want to change? This question lingers in his mind until the following day when he sees the two girls starting their campaigns. Later, he meets Minami again, and she shows him her proposals. The protagonist notices that everything is poorly written, so they start to revise it. Fumia manages to make everything more understandable, which surprises Minami. Determined to help her, he tells her that he can be of assistance in tasks that require more brain power. Minami knows that our friend would be a great help and asks him why he's so interested in helping her. Fumia seriously tells Minami that he wants to beat Hanami. She always ends up in the first place, but this time it will change. Let's remember that what our friend likes the most are challenges, and what better challenge than defeating the most beloved girl in school. In class, our friend thinks about how to defeat the final boss. Hinami has everything to win, but nobody is invincible. Just like in the video game, he always beats her, but she has a significant advantage in the game of life. With all the advice she's given him, there might be a chance to beat her. Later, Minami and Fumia go to the sports club, and as always, she starts causing some mischief. Seconds later, she begins to explain all her proposals, which Fumia had prepared, 
And to his surprise, the girls instantly support them. Later, in the park, Minami thanks Fumia for all he's doing, and he asks her why she wants to beat Himani. Minami says something quite sad but true, nobody remembers second place. Nobody knows the second highest mountain in Japan or the second longest river in the world. Just as nobody remembers that she's second place in everything. In fact, last semester, she was in third place, but nobody noticed. Number one is the one who always stands out. Fumia wants to somehow encourage her, but Minami is one of those people who always appear happy, even if they aren't, and prefer to hide their feelings so that others don't worry. Minami, we understand you. All of this makes Fumia even more determined to beat Hinami, and thanks to all this, his skills for relating to others improve. Now, he asks Tama for help with some things. After doing them, Tama tells him to take care of Minami because she tries so hard that she doesn't realize it's harmful to her. But she knows he'll do it. Things keep getting better, and now Fumia can communicate more confidently with Minami, which his teacher notices. The day finally arrives, and it's time for the speeches. But something happens that leaves Fumia and Minami speechless. When Hinami gives her speech and presents her proposals, they turn out to be the same ones Minami would have given. This puts them in a great predicament. However, Fumia had a plan B, which is essentially having Minami do stand-up comedy, and it works because everyone in the room laughs and enjoys the entire speech. But the day of the votes arrives, and despite the great effort they put in, they couldn't defeat Hinami. This obviously makes them somewhat sad, but they know that everything they did was worthwhile. They fought until the end. We tried. Days later, Hanami tells Fumia that they made a great effort, but their mistake was underestimating her. Perhaps next time, they'll succeed. But now that all of this is passed, it's time to return to the plan. And now he must invite a girl to go out. He has the perfect excuse. Himani gives Fumia two tickets to a theater play to invite Kikuchi, and our friend does just that. He goes to the library and asks her out, and the girl says yes. Later, after leaving the library, Fumia realizes that Tama is watching as Himani and Minami train together. She tells him that since losing the elections, Minami has been training harder to beat Himani in athletics, which worries her because she feels that she's pushing herself too hard. But Fumia tells her that everything will be okay. She's quite strong. However, this time, Tama is correct because we can see that Minami is pushing herself too much, much more than her body can handle. That's why Fumia wants to talk to her and asks her why she wants to defeat Hinami so badly. She tells him about the first time she met Hinami and the first time she defeated her. It was in a basketball game. The game was about to end, and the team that scored the final point would win. Right at the end, Hinami threw the ball, and her team won. Despite the loss, her teammates weren't sad. They were happy to have come so far, a feeling she couldn't share. Days later, she watched the finals, and this time, Hinami's team lost. However, just like her team, Hinami's team was happy to have made it to the finals, but she wasn't. It was at that moment she realized they were similar. That's why she was surprised when they both ended up at the same high school. Despite being so similar, she has never been able to beat her in anything. No matter what she does, Hinami always puts in more effort and gives more of herself. All of this led Minami to a feeling of not knowing what to do with her life. She no longer finds motivation in anything, she's just existing. This is why she stopped going to practices and later quit the track and field team. All of this worries Fumia and Tama, so they ask her to walk home together and talk for a while. Once outside of school, Tama asks her how she feels, and now Minami can't contain her emotions any longer. She says that she'll always be second place, always beneath Hinami. However, she admires her. She's an admirable girl, always striving, always smiling, always being kind to others, and never showing off. Even though she wants to like her, she can't. She feels envious because Hinami is always meddling in her affairs, always getting in her way, and always being so annoying. She doesn't let her shine. The two boys listen to everything she has to say, and Tama makes Minami open her eyes. She tells her that there's one thing in which she is number one, and that is being the silliest girl, so silly that she doesn't see the people she helps, so silly that she doesn't notice all her efforts, so silly that she doesn't realize that Minami is the one who saved her from loneliness. She is her hero, no matter where she is. For her, Minami will always be number one. All of this helps Minami come to her senses and see things differently, and in some way, she frees herself from all her thoughts. That's why she re-enrolls in the track and field club and no longer focuses too much on winning, but more on enjoying it, especially with her friends. A few moments later. Now that summer vacation has finally arrived, Hinami tells Fumia about all the things she has to do. The most important is having a date with Kikuchi. To make things go perfectly, they'll have a rehearsal. This time, Hinami will act with Kikuchi, and Fumia will have to do his best to make the date go well. The fake date begins, but Fumia finds it quite uncomfortable that Hinami is acting so strangely. However, he has to endure it. Their first stop is a clothing store where Hinami gifts her backpack. Still, this makes Fumia uncomfortable. Hinami explains that it's quite worn out, so they'll go buy a pin to cover where it's torn. After this, they go to the video game area, where they play a few rounds of Smash Bros. As usual, Fumia wins. Then, Hinami gives him Kikucha's phone number so he can talk to her. Fumia isn't sure about doing it because he thinks it might be a bit hasty, especially since Kikuchi hasn't given him her number yet. 
However, Hanami assures him that she asked Kikuchi if she could give her number to Fumia, and she agreed. So, he sends the first message, and after thinking for a bit about what to write, he sends it. Hanami tells him not to expect a quick response because Kikuchi usually takes a while to reply. However, Kikuchi responds almost instantly, showing a significant interest in Fumia. After having a meal, Hanami tells them that the others are planning a barbecue for the night, and the main goal is to get Izumi and Nakama to spend time together. So, the next day, everyone gathers at Minami's house, but she informs them that her family just arrived, so they have to meet somewhere else. Hanami suggests Fumia's house, and everyone goes there. Fumia's younger sister gets excited to see friends in their house. In his room, Minami looks for magazines for guys, but all she finds are game controllers. They discuss how to make Nakamu and Izumi spend time together and come up with a plan. Afterward, Mizu notices that Fumia bought hair wax but doesn't know how to use it, so she changes his look. The girls approve of the new style. The next day brings a significant challenge for Fumia because it's his first date. Kikuchi arrives, and they go to the cinema and have a great time. Things get complicated when Fumia feels like he's talking too much and hasn't covered any of the topics Hanami suggested. He changes the conversation topic, which Kikuchi notices. While chatting, she mentions that there are times when it's easy to talk with him, but in other instances, it's quite challenging. She clarifies that she finds it difficult to talk to anyone, not specifically him. She tells him she had a lot of fun and would like to go out again. Fumia also enjoyed the date and, following Hanami's advice, invites her to watch the fireworks. Before that, they have to go to a riverside boathouse. The plan starts, and they manage to get Nakamu and Izumi to sit together. However, it's not enough, so they spend the entire day creating situations to bring the two closer. Amidst all of this, Fumia realizes he's never been in such an environment, but being with the others feels nice. The evening comes, and the final part of the plan is for Nakamu and Izumi to go somewhere dark together. They succeed, and finally, only Fumia and Hinami are left. She tells him that she has an extra test for him and begins acting as if she were genuinely frightened to see how he'd react in that situation. Fumia knows that everything she's doing is an act, so he tries to stop her performance. He notices a cicada and makes it fly, and this time, they both become genuinely frightened. She asks him to help her get up, and when he does, they end up too close to each other. But this was another test by Hinami. Later, all the kids gather, and during the night, Hinami discusses their progress. While they're talking, someone is about to arrive, and Fumia immediately hides. Who arrives is Mizu. The guy starts talking with Hinami about all the guys and how they behave. He also tells her that he feels some envy because he thinks everyone is honest and says what's on their mind, while he feels like he's living his life as a spectator. He believes Hinami lives her life the same way. Hinami responds that she might feel that way at times, but she needs to think about it more to give a good answer. Mizu also tells Hinami that he likes her but knows that if he asks her out, she will say no. Before they can continue, Fumia can't stand it anymore, comes out of hiding, and apologizes for overhearing their conversation. Mizu tells him not to worry, all three of them are equally weird. The next day is the day of the fireworks, and Fumia meets Kikuchi. The two of them enjoy it even more than their first date. But this time Fumia doesn't use the conversation topics he had learned or any conversation skills. When he asks her if it's easy to talk to him this time, she answers yes. All of this makes him wonder if what he's doing is right. When he meets with Hinami, he tells her that maybe he needs to find a balance between having skills and being himself. Hinami doesn't like this idea and asks him if he plans to abandon everything and follow his instincts. She says that strategies are everything to survive in life, but if he doesn't want to follow them, it's fine. And this is the end. She returns the pin they bought, takes her train, and leaves. Meanwhile, Fumia watches a relationship he thought was strong crumble out of nowhere. Kikuchi helps him overcome this situation. He tells her everything he had done, the goals, the skills, and everything else. Fumia tells her he doesn't know what he was becoming. On one hand, he liked his new self and everything he could do, but he felt like he was building a mask that wasn't him. Kikuchi tells him that she likes him the way he is, but she also admires that he is trying to change. He should also be grateful to the person who started this change. This makes Fumia reflect on everything. At night, he sends a message to Hanami to meet, and the next day, the two of them meet in the same place where they revealed their identities. Fumia tells her that he accepted this challenge because it was just like video games. Unlike real life, in video games, you can do whatever you want, and he didn't think something like that could happen in reality. But when he met her, he realized that it was possible. Before meeting her, every day was gray, but everything started to change when he met her. However, building a mask won't solve all his problems, and it will eventually become a problem for her. She always wants to be number one in everything. But there's one thing she can't beat him at, video games, and the reason is that she doesn't have a clear goal, but he does. Hinami tells him she disagrees with what he's saying, but she'll put it to the test. From that day on, the two of them will try to change in their own ways. With all of this, their friendship becomes stronger than ever. Now, to improve his skills, Fumia starts working at the same restaurant where Mizu works. The story concludes with Fumia, just like at the beginning, playing Smash, but now with a significant difference, he's surrounded by friends. If you made it to this part of the video, comment Smash, and I'll give you a big shout out.
you know that if you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, that would really help me. You can also find other videos here that you might like. With nothing more to say, my name is Alex, and I wish you a great day, afternoon, or night. Bye bye.